In this video, we're going to take a look at some general enhancements to Inventor 2011. First off, let's take a look at our application options. One of the most common questions I have right now is, will it maintain the classic UI switch? The answer is yes. We also have a new winter night color scheme that is now the new default, which also includes selections for highlighting. If you look at the display tab, you will see much more streamlined setup for your display tab, due in part to the new visual styles, which we'll take a look at in a second. You also can notice the highlighting has been enhanced with the pre-highlight. So as you move your cursor over something, you can see it being selected before you actually select it. I go to the View tab, you can see in the Appearance panel we have a lot more options now as well as on the navigation bar with the visual styles. These are quick presets that you would normally have to set by hand inside of the old display tab as well as some new ones. You can actually do photorealistic rendering, shaded, shaded with edges, shaded with hidden edges, wireframe with in wireframe with hidden edges, wireframe with visible edges only, monochromatic, watercolor, and also illustration. Any one of these modes are perfectly viable for performing your normal modeling operations. I like to switch it over to the illustration to showcase this. or go back to the traditional shaded with edges. You can also now apply a ground plane and this will allow us to see reflections much like a ground plane inside of Studio. I prefer not to show the grid display so I usually do turn that off and we can also adjust the opaqueness and the reflection quality but as you can see there is no reflection right now. Well, we can fix that. Let's go over here to Reflections, turn those on, and also look at those settings again. We can adjust the reflection quality here, and also the blur, and the blur fall off. While we're at, let's go ahead and turn the shadows on as well. I should mention that this realistic rendering that you apply does carry forward through Showcase and through Revit if you do need to send the data over to those programs. You also have a lot more lighting styles now rather than any traditional default or two lights with a lot more options applied. So here we have Empty Lab and you can see there's a brightness and an ambience to these lights. We also have image-based lighting which does allow us to reflect the images onto parts that have reflective images, or reflective faces. Let's go ahead and apply that. And here you can see the empty lab. Kind of like your own personal wrapper assembly if you're using Studio a lot before this. All right, another question you're asking yourself is, does this really replace Studio? Well, I would say no, because Studio does have its own characteristics still, such as animating or doing some in-depth lighting controls that you just can't do inside this environment still. But this gives you a really quick, nice rendering of what you need without having to create necessarily a wrapper assembly or dummy models to throw something into or having to mess around with surface or color styles there. Uh, or as well as lighting styles inside of Studio. But if you still need to do animations, then you definitely still need the Studio environment. Also, let's take a look at these advanced color styles. This is actually a new library that you do install with the software. So when you look at your color styles, such as here we have default, you can see you can turn on realistic appearance. Also adjust the scale and rotation 
and adjust the uh, different texture maps you would have for that. And these are all, all are high quality imagery. Um, nothing here is scaled down, so it uh, definitely aids in the process of creating a more realistic image.